Good evening, everyone. Time Good for another evening, member update. For another member update. Now, this is a pretty big day for the price of silver. You can see we're trading in the after hours. We got up to about 17, 17 or so. And you can see that it's very important, more important than the last spike that we had off that low because we're actually testing the trend line that goes all the way back to the 2011 top. So this is really important. You can see we did just touch through it as a breakout. We'll go ahead and pull up the MACD to see what we're doing on that indicator. And you can see we are crossed above the zero line. So the next big resistance level is going to be that 19, just a little below 19. You can see the points that we tested it at. It's been tested multiple times here, once, twice, three times. And then of course the breakdown. So that's going to be the big level that we're looking at. Now, if we test that level or when we test that level, uh, clearly we're going to be above this trend line and that's going to be significant. Now, it doesn't mean that it's never been broken before. It has been broken. We had it break back here and that was, uh, it rose and then it created this new top in the trend line turned down and that's when we got new lows. So th this was significant, but it, it was met with new low, newer lows after that. It doesn't mean that can't happen again. But uh, the way things are lining up, I'm pretty convinced this is the bottom. Uh, let's put the volume on it. We can see the ridiculous nature of the volume. Nothing like we had here. You can see both uh, here and here. Uh, we didn't have this type of volume. This only came in with this new low. So we were buying around 15. A lot of us were buying. I'm going to go and look at the amount of ounces stacked, which is really phenomenal. And uh, we'll take down that pole and put up a new pole. Now, I, it does give people, n the way it's limited is that you can't vote multiple times, but people did. We'll, we'll get to that when we look at the chart. So let's clear everything off here and take a look at the oil price and do a cross on that. Now oil actually started to move up after it made a move down to that 44 price. That's going to be really critical. We're going to look a little bit at this Charlie Hebdo thing and what's going on in Europe. But first let's look at this cross here. You can see that uh, silver has kind of already made the bottom. If we go out to the weekly, we can see that oil kind of followed silver down. So silver went down long before oil did, and then oil finally gave way. That's something similar that we've seen in the past. Now, there isn't a direct correlation between them, but I like to watch the crosses. So oil is starting a bounce right now. Silver has already bounced a while ago, and uh, we're we're lining up for a new thing here. Nothing like the uh, last crisis, although you can see the similarity in the bottom that was put in with silver, kind of this slow rounding thing. We're already now up to this area. Let's pull out the uh, comparison. We're, we're already back up now to this right shoulder sort of thing of this bottom being put in. We're relatively somewhere in here. And as you can see in the last time, that was just a little bit before uh, the blast off stage. So we could be approaching that blast off stage. Now I wanted to do the other uh, overlay that I like to do, and that's the Dow 30 over the silver price. That's going to give us the difference between paper and physical assets. And you can see uh, the volatility on the Dow has has become really insane. I think today's swing was uh, something like a 500-point uh, swing from top to bottom. Uh, you can see the spike all the way up here, uh, 17.9, and then the drop all the way down here, 17.5. So 400-point daily intraday swing. And you can just see, compared to silver, that's actually much more volatility. Normal, normally, silver is going to be the most volatile uh, market out there, but we can see now that the Dow has actually taken the lead of that long term on the Dow, just looking at it by itself. Um, the volatility seems to indicate a, a topping sort of formation here. 
you, we've got rolling over, then huge spikes up and down, up and down. That tends to ind indicate a top. It doesn't mean for sure that the top is in, but it tends to be an indication of a top when you get that kind of volatility. We know that the VIX has been spiking up. So before we get over to the silver, uh, taking a look at the, the silver that we bought and uh, some silver recommendations going forward, I wanted to take you over to uh, the story, this Charlie Hebdo thing. Now, uh, I don't know what is behind this thing. I, I'm going to read a little bit of this and let me give you a huge caveat here. I certainly don't agree or even trust Benjamin Fulford. But there are a number of people out there like Benjamin Fulford who are talking about what's going on in Asia. We know that Asia, specifically China, is on the rise. We know that Europe and the West are in decline. So what's going on behind this? Well, it's pretty clear to me. I don't know how many of you have looked at the the videos and stuff like that, that this, this Hebdo thing was a, a, some kind of false flags hoax thing that they did. An absolutely bizarre response. We're going to look at this March thing real quick, but let's read the Fulford take on it. The obviously faked terror incident in Paris last week was clearly aimed at preparing public opinion in the West for an operation to take down the Saudi Arabian monarchy. The operation consisted of having a French magazine publish cartoons of a sort that would lead to a death penalty in Saudi Arabia and then faking the execution of the magazine's staff. This serves to make Western public aware make the Western public aware and angry about the sort of thing the Saudi government does. It is a fact that the Saudi monarchy has for years bankrolled and promoted an obscurist, obscurantist radical sect of Islam known as Wahhabism. They have also worked hand in glove with the Bush Nazi crime family for decades in their project to replace Western democracy with totalitarian dictatorship. This is a country where if you are caught in an adulterous relationship, the punishment to this day is to have you buried up to the waist in the sand and then stoned to death. This is also a country where you can be arbitrarily killed by the ruling family for questioning their control of that country. When I was there, I was advised that if I got in a traffic accident, I should pretend to be injured so that I would be taken to a hospital instead of a police station. If I ended up in a police station, I might never come out, I was told. This family mafia country has been using their oil wealth to create armies of ignorant fanatics throughout the world. So to cut off financing for Islamo-fascists, beheading the Saudi regime would be a good place to start, or at least that's what seems to be going on in the minds of the people staging the events in Paris. There's a deeper aspect to this story, though, and he's got a member site to link to. And in Washington, D.C., we have a rump regime carrying out foolish antisocial acts like inciting race riots, faking North Korean hacking incidents. In psychological maturity, it resembles a two-year-old having a temper tantrum after its candy was taken away. So that's the full for take on that. I don't know um, how accurate that information is. I have a lot of reasons to distrust this person, but then again, there's some information there that you can't find anywhere else. And I wanted to look at this list. It, it was a lot of digging that I had to do uh, to find this list, but we had this march. This is a very strange thing because normally the marches that you have, especially in Europe, these are the people uh, primarily anti austerity marches in these socialist uh, nightmare governments like Greece where you can retire at 40 or 45 and live for uh, you know three decades on a pension where one in three people work for the government I mean these are bankrupt socialist economies a lot of them are and uh, this is going to be the primary representatives of this so I wanted to see um, who was involved in this march because again having world leaders go and march in the streets that's a really strange thing normally people who march in the streets are marching against world leaders so what's behind this well the first thing i want to do is examine the list of the people who did this just to see who's involved and what it means so here's the list now this is a preliminary list i could not find the complete list but i assume that this is fairly accurate because they listed about 40 or 50 and there's about 40 or 50 on this list roughly so let's go through the list 
you can see that it's primarily Europe. So you can see the president of France, the prime minister of France. We've got Jordan thrown in there, but we've got Germany, the UK, Italy, Spain, the EU twice, Poland, Denmark, Belgium, Netherlands, Greece, Portugal, the Czech Republic. That's not the EU. Uh, well, I'm not sure if that is, but it's in the area. Hungary, Latvia, Bulgaria. We've got so the former Soviet nations, Croatia, Romania, Ukraine, Turkey. So, so far the odd ones out are Jordan and Turkey. There's Russia in there. That's quite interesting. We have Switzerland, Albania, Bosnia, Kosovo, Serbia. And then we've got some African nations here. Mali, Gabon, uh, Niger, Benin. Uh, then we've got North African, Tunisia. We've got the UAE. That's the only Arab representative there. That's interesting. We've got Israel twice and then the US and Canada. There's no Australia there. Very interesting because as we saw these series of false flag hoax terror incidents we had the one in ottawa then we had the one in uh western australia and then now we've got this one in france so what's going on here well by the representation here it to me the most important thing is not who is there but who is missing and clearly some of the western powers are there now barack obama didn't show up that's kind of interesting and they actually had to put out a press release about how they should have sent a more important person to this march. That's interesting. Canada did show up, but Australia did not show up. New Zealand did not show up. Um, so kind of a sparse representation in the West. And then we have virtually no one out of Africa and we have no one at all out of Asia. That's to me the most interesting. We have no one from Japan, no one from China, no one from Korea, no one from Taiwan, um, no one from any of those nations there. There's no one from India. Uh, there's no one from any of the other Arab nations. So what is going on here? Well, just by putting together the list, it seems to me, maybe Fulford is correct, something is going on in Europe. This is a European thing. This isn't to me, the equivalent of 911 type of false flag hoax operation, but this is a big operation. This is the first time we've seen world leaders march in the streets in protest of Islam or at least Islamic fundamentalism or radicalism. Now, we did have Barack Obama release a list of who's considered extremists, and of course, that's pretty much his political opposition. Uh, at least uh, the far right opposition. Most of that stuff is preppers and stackers and, and constitutionalists and liberty people. So they're getting ready for something coming up in February, um, uh, having a coalition against extremism. A lot of stuff going on. Maybe they're going to try to strengthen the police state. So let's get over to, we'll start off with the, the member poll. I'm going to go ahead and take this one down. Now the poll that we had before this was the poll on the horses and I don't remember what that number was. I think it was nine or ten thousand ounces of those horses. Those horses have performed fantastically. I have not been able to find those horses for sale in bulk. Uh, the, the only ones I've seen I think was over at JM Bullion. We'll see when we get over to JM Bullion. We, we've got a coin pick we're going to look at there but um, the price that we picked them up for around 12 bucks they're just not available anymore so congratulations to everybody who picked up those horses i think that's going to be the big winner of this uh of this bottom but uh this total here that we have is coming in at about 90,000 ounces this is how many ounces that were stacked on this recent low by members now again i pointed out that uh you got a total of 126 voters. I don't know if people voted twice. The, the way the voting software works is that it tracks you by IP address. It's set to only allow you to vote once, but maybe people came in and bought more and they added to it. So it's probably low. This number is probably low because uh, people only voted once. It was put up fairly late in the cycle of this bottom. So it's more accurate than it would have been if it were earlier. But my guess is it may be probably the number is around uh, would be if everyone could vote for every time they bought and list everything they bought. Maybe I would guess maybe 150 votes to 200 and maybe about 150,000 ounces stacked by the members. So fantastic job for everybody. I'm, I'm glad that everybody who uh, 
went ahead with me and, and purchased as many of those half ounce and two ounce horses that they could find uh, did so. I don't think that there's going to be any uh, downside to that that pick. So let's go over and look at this is uh, a coin that's available. You can see here, as I pointed out, there's this. Here's the horse. Uh, they're not available on Atmex. Um, I, I'm going to have to stop checking Gainesville anymore because they're just absolutely dead over there. The only thing they have is the 2015. Um, I'm probably going to start going to uh, JM Bullion more than uh, than uh, Gainesville and possibly here at Silver.com. So I'm probably going to start checking. Atmex and uh, Provident and JM Bullion and Silver.com because uh, these seem to be the ones that have some of the older perth. So you can see the the horses here at 20 bucks. That's consistent with what it's going for on eBay. So again, congratulations to everybody who picked up that coin. Now we've got this uh, koala here, and this is really except for the 2015. This is one of the only ones I could find that was out there. And you can see they've got a ton of these. They've got about 2,500 of these. Now, I'm tempted to buy, I've already got a couple boxes of these. We picked these up over the course of recently. Um, I think, I don't know, maybe we only have one box. I can't remember, but they uh, they seem like a good deal when the horses were running out. Now, they are going on eBay for fairly cheap. There's a seller there, and they're selling a lot of these. You can see the auction date here, you've got the 13th, the 13th, the 13th, the 13th. Here's a ton of auctions. So somebody's got a big load of these coins and they're they're selling them with free shipping. Now you can see some of these people are actually getting a steal here. Uh, you've got five bids here where someone got this coin for $11.73. I don't think you're gonna find that anywhere out there. Here's 11.23, here's another 11.73. So considering that it's free shipping, uh, maybe people would want to go and pick it up that way. I, I don't think there are too many stackers that on the member site that want to do one coin at a time. And so that might be tedious. So that's kind of a negative on that coin. But then again, that's one of the only older purse out there that I've been able to find. So we're going to keep watching this. I did a search on eBay for rolls and things like that. I did find a 100 ounce box of the Tigers. It was going for $68 a coin. So the Tigers are holding up. I didn't have any question about the fact that they would. Um, so the Tigers are holding up really well. So if you're interested in purchasing that 2014 half ounce koala, you might want to keep an eye on this stock, see how long it stays up. I think we got ours from Atmex and I don't believe they've got those back in stock. I don't think the, the horse is going to come back in stock anywhere for anyone. And uh, like I said, those prices are holding up. Congratulations to everybody who got those. So back to the silver chart. We have this rally. We'll come in close here and take a look at how it's performing. It is a very thin um, resistance area when we look at it from kind of the medium term view. There really isn't a lot there above us. This is the two hour. Let's try to get a good view of this. Uh, you have this area here where we got reversed the last time we tested it and we have this area back here. This is really only about maybe 15 days of activity. It's not a lot uh, for the silver market to get through, say a quick blast like that and just simply get through it. Now the resistance that is above that, as I pointed out before, the resistance that's around that 19 level, that's going to be much more significant. Uh, and then, of course, the resistance, this is the resistance up here at this 19 level. This is much more significant. And the most significant of all, of course, is going to be that 26 resistance. But if you look at the just the general design of this downtrend in the chart, um, it, it's not a lot of resistance there it could very easily slice through this in a, a rapid move. And one of the things about these types of bottoms is that they take long enough to form. You can see we're looking at about a two month, two and a half month period now where we've been going, chopping back and forth kind of sideways. And what happens is these sorts of bottoms as they're put in, they have, have the ability to kind of, they tend to lull you to sleep. 
So it wouldn't surprise me at all to see this thing back off a little bit, back and fill, and then have another day like today where you just kind of get through everything and you're off to the next level. That's how they work. Uh, they kind of sneak up, you, sneak up on you and then it's too late. So we'll be watching for deals going forward that kind of uh, look backwards to what's available when we start to move up. I think that uh, most of the people who have stacked already probably are going to hold off uh, as the rally begins. It has a long way to run. Uh, the key target is this 26 level. It's a long way to run, but silver can run very fast. It, it has the same ability on the upside to move. It did in 2010. It has the same ability to move fast to the upside as it has to the downside. And we'll talk to you next time.